In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the first of a series of the three Force Unleashed Battle Packs that Hasbro released around 2010-2011. Uh, they were Toys R Us exclusives at the time, and I think these are some of the best sets that Hasbro's ever released in general. Uh, personally, on my channel here, these are some of the most highly anticipated action figures I've been wanting to review, and I've been wanting... When I... Uh, I guess I'll mention this now before I jump right into the review as well. When I decide what figures I'm going to review, I want to do something that I'm more in the mindset for. I don't want to just jump into a review and then slug my way through it. And then by the time I finish editing the video and get it uploaded and watch it a little bit, I'm like, you know, I just feel like I didn't do this action figure enough justice. But right now I feel like I can give these um, three sets that are coming up the most justice possible right now and I'm definitely in the mindset for them I've been wanting to review these for what maybe two years now at this point and I think this is perfect opportunity for them since we're still in that season where it's uh the 15th anniversary of the Force Unleashed and it's continu continuing the trend of reviewing uh Force Unleashed action figures on the channel and I hope to get them all at some point and I think uh between these three packs this is the bulk of them so the one you're looking at here is the first set of the bunch. I did get all three of uh, the first two sets, which are this one here, and then the other ones with the Mandalorian Star Killer, which will be coming up next. Uh, those were considered sets one and two. I did get those brand new in 2017. I do recall seeing them at Toys R Us back around 2011. And I think I saw them for clearance even, and I think sometimes the clearance price was going down to like $20 for this set, which it's another one of those incidences where I wish I got them at the time, but unfortunately I didn't. And I was just during the time I was passing through Toys R Us and thought, hey, this is a neat looking set, and you know, maybe someday I'll own that. And then, of course, I didn't get it at the time, and then 2017, I finally decided to get both sets, brand new. And it was in one lot on eBay. And I forget what I paid exactly for it. I It was nowhere near the price now. I can tell you that. Maybe maybe a little bit less than $200 free shipping between the two of them together. Uh, which, yes, that's a little pricey. But compared to what I've seen them go for now. And then sometimes one set by itself. It's not too bad of a deal. Uh, and, and after I got it in hand, I'm very happy I own them both. Uh, or all three sets. Uh, as for the third set, and that's the one with the Lord Star Killer and the Darth Bobos, I actually got each of those action figures individually loose on eBay, uh, but now I have the complete set, but I did not get it brand new. And I think I'm missing what you see the background here. Uh, I think one may have came with that set as well, but I think that one came out a little bit later than the first two, and I'm not sure if it's considered like set three of the entire group. I think that may have came out about a year later. Uh, and speaking of this background, you might recognize this. Uh, some of the early reviews I've done on the channel up until, oh, what was it, about a year ago now at this point. Uh, yeah, that's the background I used for uh, many of my reviews between this one and the other one that I'll feature next. Uh, they're very nice background sets to own. I've taken lots of pictures with them and They've definitely gotten their use over the last six years for me, and I'm happy to own them and finally feature in another video here and actually describe where they came from and uh, some of the history behind it. Looking back on it, the uh, reason why I don't really do the reviews so much anymore with that background is it is very uh, colorful, and then you get a lot of action figures, especially like this camo Evil Trooper here. Uh, they don't really show up as well, those backgrounds. I'm glad I did it for the time I did, but I'm glad now I have this better setup with better lighting and uh, the back and the black background here. I think that's the way it's going to be for a little while now. I'm always looking for improvements, and there's a couple along the way that I do think of that at some point I might utilize. But for now, I think this is a winning strategy for me. So anyways... What more can I say about the set? So like I said, I got this 2017. Had it in my collection ever since. Very happy to have it. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at the five action figures you see here. Uh, so where do we start? 
Uh, I'll just describe a little bit about each one before we take a closer look. So we have the Phasing Shadow Stormtrooper here, which one came with this set and then one came with uh, the second set. Very nice action figure. Um, very intricate of how Hasbro made it as well. You can see he's totally translucent and you can see all the way through him. Uh, then we have the Camo Evil Trooper here, which he does not show up in the game at all. At least that I recall, but I do know he does show up in some of the concept art. Um, he may have showed up in the Force Unleashed book as well. I have yet to get around to reading that, which I've been wanting to since 2008, but maybe someday. Uh, usually when I read, I don't really read for fun so much. I'm usually reading uh, for research-based or historical-based or something like that. But at some point, I would like to get into more uh, fun readings every now and then. So we got the second release of Juno Eclipse here, and this is the one with the cleavage showing. Uh, it's a pretty good action figure as well. Um, compared to the first one, I I guess it comes down to your personal preference, but personally, I'm happy to have this action figure. It looks really good with uh, Starkiller here. And this is the Starkiller based upon his appearance on Raxus Prime, which is probably my favorite appearance of Starkiller. I have featured him on the channel before, and... Uh, Taking a closer look at all the Star Killer action figures that Hasbro had released up to that point. And I think he's my favorite of the three and three quarter inch Star Killers. Then, last but not least, we have uh, Ron Koda's Militia here, or one of the soldiers. I think this is the only one that Hasbro's released. And if you uh, recall, these guys are featured on the Skyhook above Nar Shaddaa, which is the first mission. Where you play a star killer and you go on the hunt for Ram Kota. Of course, you encounter a lot of these guys along the way. Uh, so, Ram Kota did not trust having clones because, um, of course, he kind of see a little bit into the future as to what was going to happen. He believed they were not very uh, individual thinking, I guess, or in a way of, um, oh, how do I describe it? He knew that they were programmed, basically, and he didn't trust having them around him, which ended up being a smart move on his part. So he decided to make his own militia, and as you can see, this is probably a pretty good precursor as to what would become of the Rebel Fleet Troopers, based upon the helmet and a little bit of the outfit here. So we'll take a closer look at Starkiller here first. So this is the outfit he wears when he duels Kasdan Paratus, which unfortunately does not have an action figure from Hasbro, but I have seen a lot of great customs on eBay of him. Unfortunately, it's very expensive. Um, customs I have seen go for two or three hundred dollars, but they do look very nice and a <coughs> and a great representation of the character. Maybe someday I'll break down and go ahead and get one. We'll see. So I kind of see this as like a sandstorm star killer, based upon the wrappings he has. Might be something you see him on tattooing with. Uh, as far as portraits are concerned, I think this is one of the best for star killer. You can take his uh, wrappings off here. I think what you would have to do is pop the head off, and then you would just pull this off, pop the head back on. Not going to do that for this video because I think it'd be kind of complicated and it'd take me several minutes to do it. And I don't think it's really necessary. You can pretty much see uh, just about all Star Killer there is to see. But that is a very nice head sculpt. I think that's spot on to Galen Merrick. Lots of nice detailing in his outfit here. Uh, this is another one of those action figures that reminds me of just how much detail Hasbro put into the action figures at the time. I'm not saying that they don't do that now, but I feel like at the time they took more care and were more particular about each action figure instead of just sculpting a figure once and then reusing it for so many others. 
Look at this belt there. Or multiple belts, it looks like. It looks like he has some binoculars there as well. Which are sculpted on. It's the back of his tattered wrappings there. Uh, interesting about his arms, they look mechanical in a way. Not sure what the purpose behind that was, but it is very interesting. And this one, it's pretty much completely wrapped. Uh, he has some stitching there. And then it looks like he has a mechanical hand almost. Then the wrappings continue on to his legs here. And uh, black boots basically. Uh, in terms of accessories, or actually let's go over the articulation first. He does have a ball joint at the head, and then hinge shoulders and elbows, swivel wrist, uh, swivel waist, which the swivel joint is right there, and uh, swivel hips, and then hinge knees and hinge ankles. So it's pretty standard articulation at the time. In terms of weapons and accessories, uh, unfortunately he doesn't fit his lightsaber in his hand too well. I'm surprised it hasn't fallen out by now. He does have this lightsaber here, which kind of reminds me of um, Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber a little bit. It's definitely a unique hilt. Uh, I think all these Starkiller action figures pretty much have a unique hilt of some sorts. It's not one to consistently keep a lightsaber. There's a nice red blade there. And uh, you could pretty much only fit it in this hand what little we can and you have to have them hold it at the bulkiest part of the lightsaber otherwise it'll fall out like that and of course this hand's more of an open palm looks like he's using the force uh, let's see here and that's probably about the best spot you can get him to hold it which is not the most natural place to hold a lightsaber Still, very nice action figure. Go ahead and move on to Juno Eclipse here. So I do have the other Juno reviewed on the channel, if you want to check that out. And for the most part, it's this is the uh, same exact action figure, other than the uh, torso here. Uh, so the appearance for this Juno is pretty much when we first see her in person. That is, on um, Starkiller is about to board for his mission on the Rogue Shadow. The head sculpt's pretty good. I think between this Juno and the other one, the other one has a little bit better paint apps compared to this one. This one does seem a little bit more on the sloppy side. Uh, it's not bad at all, and it's definitely nowhere near... Uh, it's basically nowhere near bad at all. But it definitely could have been a little bit crisper, I think. Especially around the eyes there. Now you can take her cap off. There's her hair and her face sculpt there and fortunately the cap does sit well on her head it doesn't fall off or anything like that and here's her rank badge open shirt there and the legs are pretty much the same exact legs that we got on the other Juno as well in terms of their articulation, she does have bulge right the head, and then hinge shoulders and elbows, swivel wrists. Uh, this time, I will say about the hands, is they painted them totally in black. Uh, as you know, between the other Juno and that was carried over to the Usain Azard action figure, they have uh, a little bit of flesh on the top of her uh, hand there. This time, Hasbro painted it in to be all black. Uh, so she does have swivel waist and swivel hips and hinged knees and hinged ankles as well. Weapons and accessories, just standard E11. We've seen this time and time again. But yeah, overall, it's a very nice Juno. Between this one and the other one, I suppose it comes down to your personal preference. I would say get them both. They're both great action figures in their own way.
I imagine this is probably the one that people would want more of. Can't go wrong with having this for your collection. And usually when I have her displayed, it's her and Starkiller like that together, or something similar. Uh, next we'll take a look at another more complicated figure. And that's Coda's Militia. Another Another highly detailed action figure. Does have a lot of intricate parts about him. Uh, he has this huge Gatling gun, which is outrageously big for a person like this. So as you can see, he's pretty decked out. Has a lot of uh, intricate tools about him and a lot of uh, accessories. Uh, you can take his helmet off here, which does slip off pretty easily. And as you see, like I mentioned, this is kind of like the precursor to the Rebel Fleet Trooper helmet. Nice detailing in this. Just the head sculpt, pretty standard. It kind of looks like Starkiller a little bit with a different hair sculpt. Kind of see the resemblance. Some armor here, uh, straps around, so it has some ammo attached to it. This is arm here, and I'm not sure if these are meant to be any blades of some sorts. Uh, interesting, the shoulder armor you can pop out. They each have a their own tiny peg here. I don't really see the need to have to take them out. I guess if you wanted more uh, flexibility in the shoulders, where you can uh, have it go all the way up, it might be used for that. Uh, here's a skirt here, a little bit longer on this side. This looks like that'd be a pouch. On this side here is a little bit of a cut there. And then the wrappings around his legs there. So in terms of the articulation, uh, he does have a ball joint at the head, and his shoulders and elbows, swivel wrist, swivel waist, and then swivel hips. And he has hinge knees and no articulation ankles, surprisingly. That's not really a hindrance for him. Even without a stand, he stands pretty good on his own. Uh, I would recommend giving him a stand, especially if he's holding that large Gatling gun there. Uh, in terms of accessories, of course, the helmet here, the gun, which we'll take a look at in a second, the shoulder pieces. And then he has his backpack here, which does come out. And fortunately, it does stay in the place pretty good. Uh, in terms of the <clears throat> Gatling gun here, this kind of reminds me of like the, if you recall that Battlefront 2 clone pack with the clone commander, which is just a Galactic Marine labeled as a clone commander. This, I think, is pretty much about the same exact weapon that comes with him. And that's featured in the game as well. Has that rotary look to it. Uh, but problem I have with these weapons is they're just way too bulky. There's no way in real life that a person's going to be hauling this thing around like that, for instance. It's just not happening. Uh, maybe if it was similar to the clone one where they hold it at about waist level like that, for instance, it might make more sense. But in this style, no, it's just not happening. Well, fortunately, he does hold it pretty well. I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, it doesn't want to fall out or anything like that. So if you pose with him a little bit, you can probably get him in some nice positions. Uh, next, we'll take a look at the Evil Trooper here, which I do have the, <clears throat> the first Evil Trooper reviewed on the channel. If 
you want to check that out. And this is the same exact action figure, just painted a little bit different. And this time he has uh, camo colors, which kind of looks like a cow a little bit. Like I said, I don't think he was featured in the game with this deco at all. I'm pretty sure in some concept art out there, he is included in that. Overall, nice detailing. There's the two thermal detonators there. The pouches. In terms of the articulation, he does have ball joint the head, then pin shoulders and elbows, swivel wrist, swivel waist, and then swivel hips, and then hinged knees and hinged ankles, just like the other trooper. Weapons and accessories, same exact uh, weapons and accessories minus the display base. For this figure, he comes with the two DC-17 pistols. And then the long rifle here, which is painted a little bit different. This time it's just cast in all black, including the strap here, as you can see. It kind of looks like it'd be a little bit more of a flimsy plastic as well. Perhaps it's just my sample. And the backpack here is removable. I'm a big fan of the Evil Troopers, so I'm happy to have more for the collection. Too bad uh, we weren't able to really army build these, though, unless you buy them loose on eBay individually, which is probably expensive, or you buy multiples of the pack. Uh, which, who's really going to do that? So it's a nice evil trooper. Then last but not least is the phasing Shadow Storm Trooper. Not just any Shadow Storm Trooper. This one's actually phasing out. As you can see by his translucent plastic. Some nice blue in the face there. Uh, as far as the mold is concerned, this is the same Storm Trooper mold that we were seeing at the time. I think this is the VOTC Stormtrooper mold from 2004. And it definitely got its uses throughout the years. And at this point, it was uh, six, seven years later, and it was still being used. It's a very nice Stormtrooper mold. I think it's uh, one of the best that Hasbro's ever made. Even to this day, with uh, newer molds, I still think it holds up really nice. So as you can see, he's very translucent you can kind of see a lot of the inner workings of what goes into an action figure with this guy with a lot of the joints in the inside there you can see the joints in his knees there and the inside of the plastic now so this pack Came with one of these guys and the pack number two came with the other one so if you got the complete set of every single one of these packs you would get two of these guys and they're both the same exact figure in terms of the articulation he does have ball joint the head and hinge shoulders and elbows elbows do go past 90 degrees a little bit it's nice uh, so wrist and joint the torso Swivel hips, and then hinge knees, and hinge ankles as well. So you can get this guy some nice poses. For accessories, E11 again, but this time it's uh, very translucent, as you can see. And this is the only time I think we've really gotten a translucent E11. I really like to know some of the science behind this, of how the Stormtrooper could phase in and out, and then on top of that... Uh, not just the actual character could phase in and out, but how can the E11 phase out with him? It's pretty interesting. Uh, he does have the holster here as well, which I have mentioned uh, the holster. I'll just show it for this video. It doesn't really fit the blasters too well. It's usually about the best you can do it, something like that, which doesn't look right at all. I don't think many people really use the holsters. 
it's still necessary for the stormtroopers to have them. They're kind of odd without it. Then we'll just take a closer look at this background here real quick. Some of the details with this. Uh, I think this is supposed to be Abrax's Prime. And it's just some characters in the background. And it looks really good with the figures. Move this aside for the moment. <clears throat> Other than that, I think that's pretty much all I can really tell you about this set. Uh, showed you just about everything it came with. So would I recommend it for your collection? I totally would despite the price. Like I said, I think these are some of the best sets that Hasbro's ever released. Uh, of course, the second and third set will be coming here within the next couple days as well. Uh, ooh. The Shanker Juno here. The lizard. Hat there. Do something like that for Juno. Uh, so, yeah. Highly recommended set. They're perfect action figures. I think these were some of the biggest highlights for 2010 and 2011 for Star Wars action figures. Even in a uh, direct competition with what we were getting the TVC line and then the Clone Wars line at the time. And to this day, I still think all five of these hold up really nice and are in direct competition with what we get today even. Uh, I would argue in some ways they're even better than what we get today. Uh, the detail in them is impressive and uh we, i think uh some of the uniqueness about some of these action figures is just something we don't really get anymore especially with like the phasing out uh the shadow stormtrooper there uh, we do have a shadow stormtrooper in the tvc line both in the what was it the black hawk battalion or something like that black hole i think it was and then um we also got the force unleashed phasing in and out Shadow Stormtrooper as well, but that one didn't really have the translucent plastic like this one. Uh, so, of course, nowadays, if Hasbro released a phasing Stormtrooper like that, they'd probably make a deluxe action figure just by the, by the amount of detail that goes into it. And I don't know, maybe it's easier, I don't know. But I'm sure somehow Hasbro would try to make a deluxe action figure. But overall, very nice sets. Some of the best that Hasbro has ever made. Some of the highlights of the entirety of Hasbro Star Wars history, I think. Uh, you can't go wrong with owning these. And despite the price point, I still think they're highly worth it. And if you don't have these for your collection already, I would suggest trying to invest in them at some point. Whenever you find the time when you have a little bit of money to burn, I think this is a good thing to go ahead and spend it on. So anyways... That concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for plenty more reviews in the future. There will always be lots more to come. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Greatly appreciate all your support. Check out some links in the description as well if you haven't done so already. As always, thanks for watching.